Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna from Hasna's Natmi and today we're going to discuss a very important nerve in the upper limb that I'm sure you guys have come across many times and that is the radial nerve. So let's get started with the origin course termination of the radial nerve in the axilla, the arm, the forearm and eventually the hand. Before we get started on the topic of radial nerve, I just want you all to be clear on one thing and that is very important and I'd like to emphasize on that and that is what exactly does the radial nerve supply in your entire upper limb. Now the radial nerve is the extensor compartments nerve, remember that. So in case of upper limb, the extensor compartment lies posteriorly. So the radial nerve is solely responsible for supplying the muscles of the extensor or posterior compartment of both arm and forearm. What is the muscle that is the extensor of the arm? And this is the triceps muscle. So let me just make one thing clear is what is radial nerve going to supply? So muscular supply of the radial nerve is the triceps and let's all not forget the triceps has three heads moreover it supplies the muscles of your forearms extensor compartment obviously so all of those muscles are the extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor digitorum etc of all of these i just want you to remember right now the extensor carpi radialis longus the brachioradialis and the brachialis muscle. All right, just want you to remember this for now. Now let's begin talking about the origin of the radial nerve. The radial nerve originates from what? The brachial plexus, I'm sure you all remember. From which cord? The posterior cord of the brachial plexus. And that is because it is going to supply the posterior side of your upper limb. Do not forget this point. All right. So it begins in the axilla because we all know that the brachial plexus cords basically are located or situated in the axilla. Part one, I want you all to remember and I'd like you all to learn with me right now so that it gets easy for you. First part is that the radial nerve originates in axilla from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. This is your point number one and that's enough. All right. What is the second point? The radial nerve runs behind the brachial artery. First the axillary artery, then the brachial artery it lies posterior to these arteries. And why? Because obviously posterior cord of the brachial plexus we studied in the axillary arteries relations that it lies posterior to the axillary artery. And what does the axillary artery eventually become? The brachial artery. Hence the radial nerve is always lying posterior to the axillary artery and the brachial artery all right next it has to leave the axilla and enter the arm how does it do it well if we all remember we studied the lower triangular space when we studied about the intermuscular spaces on the scapular region and we remember the content of the lower triangular space it was the radial nerve so here goes the radial nerve the radial nerve basically through the lower triangular space it enters the posterior part of the arm so please keep that in mind it is never going to come to the anterior side when leaving the axilla it is going directly posterior side of the arm all right so the lower triangular space what is the radial nerve accompanying in the lower triangular space i'm sure you all remember it is the profunda brachii artery now let's talk about the next step. What does the radial nerve do next? Just remember one thing that everything's happening on the posterior side. All right. So the radial nerve behind the humerus will now traverse through the radial groove. We all studied the bony features of the humerus and we remember the radial groove, the spiral groove, um, the spiral sulcus or the radial sulcus. We all remember that. So then it traverses the radial groove, which is which is there on the humerus for the sole purpose of uh, accommodating the radial nerve so traverses what the radial groove so remember this is a very important landmark the radial groove now we all remember that on the humerus there was a deltoid tuberosity just five centimeters below the deltoid tuberosity what happens the radial nerve is going to somehow enter the anterior part of the arm and how does it do that 
Don't forget that in an arm, I'm going to cut this arm, take a cross section of it. What do you see? This is the skin. Right in the center is the humerus bone. Just imagine I've cut this and I'm showing you like that. All right. So it's a cross section. You can see this is humerus bone. This is a skin. The arm was divided into an anterior and posterior compartment via two septums, the medial and the lateral intermuscular septum. So in order for some structure to come from the posterior to the anterior side, it has to pierce either one of these septums. All right. And in the case of radial nerve, five centimeter below the deltoid tuberosity, it pierces the lateral, obviously because it's on the lateral side, not over here. It pierces the lateral intermuscular septum to emerge on the anterior side of the arm now it has entered the anterior side of the arm so that is your point number five so once it enters the anterior part of your arm it then runs downwards anterior to the lateral epicondyle and what lies in this area i'm sure you all remember is the cubital fossa it constitutes most lateral content of the cubital fossa so it comes to lie anterior to the lateral condyle and in the cubital fossa, it terminates to its terminal branches. These are the superficial and deep branch. All right. So it terminates in the cubital fossa as the superficial and deep branches. And you can say that is the termination of the radial nerve. However, we are going to talk about what happens in your forearm and arm as well. So remember one thing, the deep branch of the radial nerve is now, there's a muscle over here called the supinator, all right, supinator. This deep branch, we all know now, the radial nerve is in the anterior compartment of the upper limb. So this deep branch wants to go back to the posterior side because it has to supply the extensor compartment of your forearm. As we all mentioned, because the radial nerve supply are the extensor muscles. So this deep branch, what it does is that it, it passes through the substance of the supinator to go to the back side. So the deep branch goes posteriorly through the substance of supinator. That is the fate for the deep branch. So now I want you all to know that the deep branch of the radial nerve has a specific name and it is known as the posterior interosseous nerve. Do not forget that. So the deep branch of the radial nerve is also known as the posterior interosseous nerve, which once emerges in the cubital fossa, it moves through the substance of supinator to enter the posterior part of the forearm. Whereas the fate of the sup superficial branch of the radial nerve is quite simple. You can even call it radial nerve itself, all right? So superficial branch, all it has to do is it goes and once it reaches the lower border of the the radius bone it winds around it and it enters the dorsum of your hand because the radial nerve is going to supply cutaneous innervation to the dorsum of the hand so here i'd like to add another supply of the radial nerve which is the cutaneous supply of the radial nerve i want you all to remember the cutaneous supply of the radial nerve is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm the posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm and the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm and finally lateral side of the dorsum of the hand so what are the four cutaneous supplies of the radial nerve let me just repeat it once more obviously because it's a posterior nerve it's giving skin supply to the skin of the posterior side so posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm and then posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm and just remember one more thing that also the lower lateral side of the arm is going to be supplied by a branch of the radial nerve. And finally, the fourth supply is that it supplies the lateral side of the dorsum of the hand. Via what branch? This superficial branch that we talked about. So guys, this was an overview of the entire origin course termination of the radial nerve. I'd like to repeat it again in a fewer words. All right. To summarize, the radial nerve begins in the axilla from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus behind the axillary artery. It then runs behind the brachial artery and enters the lower triangular space accompanied by the profunda brachii artery. Through this triangular space, it enters the posterior part of the arm. In the posterior side of the arm, it traverses the radial sulcus 
and 5 cm below the deltoid tuberosity, it pierces the lateral intermuscular septum and enters the anterior side of the arm, after which it runs down in front of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. It forms the lateral content of the cubital fossa and in the cubital fossa it terminates into the terminal branches the superficial and the deep branch of the radial nerve deep branch basically is also known as the posterior interosseous nerve the deep branch passes through the supinator muscle and enters the back of the forearm to supply all the muscles of the back as i already mentioned earlier and the superficial branch stays in the anterior side and once it goes all the way below and reaches the lower end of the radius it winds around its border and enters the dorsum of the hand and supplies it because it is a superficial branch all right so what does it supply in the dorsum of the hand the lateral three and a half so let's imagine this is the thumb guys all right ignore my drawing so these are the nails of your we're talking about dorsum, all right? So it supplies the lateral three and a half digits, all right? So one, two, three and a half, all right? This is what it supplies. This is the supply of dorsum of hand. Just remember one thing that there is an exception to the distal phalanges. So distal phalanges are going to be supplied by another nerve. But overall, it supplies this entire skin of the dorsum of the hand. What are the muscular supplies of the radial nerve? We've already talked about the triceps, the extensor carpi radialis longus, the brachioradialis, the brachialis. Moreover, it also supplies the extensor compartment of forearm muscles. In addition to the extensor carpi radialis and brachioradialis, there are more muscles that I've already discussed in the forearm. In the next video, we will discuss the branches of the radial nerve. Thank you so much for watching.